Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. I'm doing the debt check-in. I'm starting this a little different than usual, though. I usually start just right into the video. I want to do a little preface this time. Um, someone asked me to take a look at their uh, pre-con upgrade deck. It's Alberto Tarasco. Um, so thank you for sending me that. And um, I went kind of nuts on this one. I have way more upgrade suggestions than usual. That isn't to say I think this is a bad deck. This is a really solid deck. It's a Selesnia. It's very focused on like getting as many like budget staples in as possible. It can do just about everything. The thing about staples is that they're staples because they are very good, right? So going with a bunch of staples is always a good call, I think. Um, yeah, I went really overboard though on the uh, upgrade suggestions. I actually divided them into different groups, or sorry, to the suggestions. The first group is upgrade, yeah. Actual, just regular upgrades. These are ones I would absolutely suggest doing. I think I have five of them, and then uh, I have uh, similar, and then function. And then, yeah, also win con is in there as well. So again, I went way overboard. So I'd say upgrade and win con are the necessary ones. And other than that, or the top suggestions, not even necessary, but yeah. After that, it's like really kind of retooling the deck, trying to focus on uh, kind of making it about different mechanics than it was originally built as. I think it's originally built as to like a solid Celestia deck, and yeah. I focused a lot more on the like tapping on tapping thing, using things like saddle and uh, vehicles to get extra value out of attacking creatures without having to send them into combat. So yeah, that's more what I ended up doing with the deck. It's not necessarily the, the only or correct way to do it. Um, this is a very open-ended commander, so there's a lot of different ways you can build this, which I think are always interesting to look at because like the open-ended ones, uh, you can kind of make anything and you can end up making a whole bunch of really great decks that um, to have a very open-ended build possibilities. If you want to talk about like uh, Kasla, where she's all about, you know, Convoke, or Averna, who's all about, um... Uh, what is it now? Cascade, yeah, Cascade. Then your limited, your options for building it optimally are much more limited than something that, like this, where it's just like, tap create a token with lifelink. So you've got token creation, you've got lifelink, you've got just Selesnia, and Selesnia is such a strong one to begin with. All right, so let's jump into it. Once again, this is deck checking, and I'm looking at Amara, Soul of the Accord, ba ba ba. Anyway, I really like this commander. It is a very open-ended commander, which I think are interesting to look at because they don't, they're, as I said, things like if you're focusing on one mechanic, it's very linear in how to build it, even how to build it on a budget. There kind of aren't many correct answers. And with a commander like this, it really is just a very open field. So I ended up doing something very different than the original deck. But anyway, reviewing decks again, we are taking a look at Amara Soul of the Accord. This is a token life gain deck. Again, it is Slesnia. I think it's very Selesnia focused, which is a good thing to do, obviously. If there is your color identity, you should work on it, or you should uh, interact with that a lot. I should say work on is probably not the right way to say that. So it is loaded with reliable sta staples, lots of ramp, a good amount of removal, and card draw. So really this does kind of check all the boxes as it is. It's also very budget, it's well under $50, so... I actually increase the price with my adding, which is usually what I avoid doing, but uh, anyway. Alright, so again, the TCG player price is uh, $47.45, at least it was on Thursday. It changes pretty quick. My upgrades, I, as I said, I usually try to keep the upgrades even lower to the price, and this time I raised the price to $56.73, so it's more expensive. I think it does a lot more kind of mechanically, but it's, I don't know. A lot of it is like, if you like it, 
maybe do that if you don't leave it, is what I'd say. Thoughts on Amara? Okay, this is a Slesnia Commander. It was originally built as a pretty solid budget deck with a lot of staples in it. Again, it's a very Selesnia deck, which is always a good idea. And Selesnia is also like a very powerful combination when you're going with things like life gain and token generation. Selesnia is just very good at those things. Uh, I decided to change the focus on the themes in the deck, which is how I ended up going overboard. Yup. Also, my wife had our son out. It was Thursday, and he actually had the day off school, and she got him out of the house for like four hours, and I don't know how to deal with free time anymore. So I ended up just like modifying the deck for like four hours. Um, that's kind of how we got here. Uh, I have made three categories of suggestions. Again, up of uh, the yeah suggestions so upgrades um and then yeah there's similar and function i think function has some that i would definitely like recommend picking up just because there's more flexibility in there but yeah depends it depends anyway okay so she is two in a oh sorry a green and a white she's two cmc a green and a white and uh for a two two elf cleric again Elf, very strong. Cleric, very strong. Great combination, especially in Selesnia. And whenever Amara, Soul of the Accord, becomes tapped, create a 1-1 one, one white creature token with a lifelink. So we've got token generation, we've got life gain, we've got an Elf Cleric. All of these things in Selesnia are, are great things to work with. This is why I say this might be the most open-ended commander I've ever covered before. Um, I really focused on like the tap effect in my upgrades. I it's not the only way to do it, right? You really can just kind of go in any direction with this commander and make a really solid deck. So I think the original deck is focused on kind of like more of the color identity, Selesnia, and getting the most of those budget staples, which is a very just very good idea. If you want to make a budget deck, just go with them. You know, take a strong color identity, a commander that works well with it, and then throw in your budget staples. And hey, yeah, that that's a very good functional deck right there. Um, making tokens with lifelink on tap is a really nice ability. So what I, what I want to point out is on tap, not on attack. This is not an attack trigger. This is just tap, right? So that's why I use things like saddle and vehicle because it allows you to tap and not really have to do anything else. Anywho. <clears throat> As I said, Amara is very open-ended, I think, which is makes for a very interesting build, at least to like kind of inspect. And yeah, I do like the commanders that are more open-ended because like you, you actually get more kind of personal input it, into it. It's not just like, I need to do Cascade because it's a Verna, right? Uh, a, a commander based around a specific mechanic has a narrow build, not many good options. As I said, yeah, exactly like Ver Averna, those narrow build commanders. Uh, I like them. I think they can be interesting to build, but at the same time, it's like a lot of your choices are already made. Just with your picking your commander, you've kind of shut off a lot of avenues where a commander like this, there's just an open field. Star cards. So this deck looks to make a lot of tokens and use life gain to keep you in the game. Fog effects are used to cancel out combat damage that comes your way, further enhancing your survivability. So this can really deal with a lot of threats. It's got a good amount of removal. It will keep you in the game. Really, it has multiple fog effects. And I think even if you use like two, people are going to be like, yeah, maybe I should just stop attacking this person because like this player is just going to keep <laughs> using fog effects. So what's the point, right? Uh, they're really, I think, in the meta game, like they're great mechanically because you're not taking damage, but in the meta game, it's basically just someone throwing away their combat. The whole combat phase is just like done because you do, you cast one spell and you're like, okay, combat canceled. So they're not gonna keep just swinging at you wildly, right? Oh, Ramptastic. Okay, so this has so much ramp. K 
Karamicha's Favor for one in a green. It is an aura. And when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Always nice. And it, uh, Enchanted Creature has add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Making any creature into a mana dork is actually very good. You can just to uh, target a token with this. So it's kind of nicer than actually having a mana dork because you might not want to like play that specific thing. You can put it on something that is already there or you can throw it on like an indestructible creature if you've got one of those lying around. There's a lot of things, it gives you a lot of versatility. Avacyn's Pilgrim, one green for a 1-1 one, one that taps for a white. Mandork that taps for a color that is the other color. Oh, oh very useful. Satanel Hierophants. Okay, three and a green for a 3-2. Each creature you control gains tap, add green to your mana pool. Place ability as a mana source. So just everything is a mana dork now. You're making all these tokens and every single token is a mana dork. This is such a powerful card. I actually... Did I add this to my Chatter Fang? I meant to. I feel like I didn't. Ah... Uh, I think I forgot, or no, I think they're sold out. That's what it was. Anyway, Lay of the Land. One green for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle your library. People usually do not like to stress these effects. Having something where it's just like, go get the land, put it into your hand. So good. Remember, if you're missing land drops and you're ramping, that's not ramp. You're not really ramping. If you're you're paying mana to get lands down rather than uh, just like if it costs you two mana to get a land into play, that is worse than just like having your land drop, right? Even if you have to spend one green mana to go get it, this is potentially mana fixing, and it's also just like guaranteeing that you get the land drop. That is so much more important than just like getting a second land. Uh, your second land might be your first land, right? So anyway, yeah. Land drop, get those land drops. Otherwise, ramp is kind of pointless. Anyway, cultivate. Search the library for two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one into the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. So this is, again, doing both those things. Ramping and making sure you're getting a land drop. Uh, just a great card in general. Again, very much a green staple. Cultivate. Card draw. Okay, explorer. You may play an additional land this turn. Draw a card. Whoa, that's ramp and card draw. Really, two of the big uh, bo checks on or boxes checked in your uh, in your deck build right there. Explorer is something I've featured before. I love explorer. I'm rhyming now. Oh no, camaraderie. Four green, white. Okay. My problem with this is just the casting cost. It's a great effect. The casting cost. Six CMC. Uh, you, uh, you gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of creatures you control. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Gaining X life, X cards equal to the number of creatures in a tokens deck is so powerful. I got no complaints about the card draw or life gain. I just wish it didn't have that 6 CMC. Even if it was like one or two lower, I would be fully on board, but... Mm. Idol of Oblivion. For two? Again, this is another thing I meant to put into my Chatterfang deck, and I don't know if I did. I should stop talking about other decks. Anyway. Uh, two mana for an artifact, and this says tap, draw a card, activate only if you created a token this turn. So you can just tap this and draw a card every turn you make a token, which is probably every turn with this deck, right? Your commander can make a token just by tapping, so you can draw a card. One extra card may not sound like a lot, but remember, if you're getting your uh, your uh, land drop and you're playing one spell, that's two. So if you're drawing two cards, you're even. That's not really gaining, but it's like, even keeping you even is not a bad thing. And then for 8 and tap, sacrifice at a level of oblivion. Create a 10-10 colorless Eldrazi creature token. So you can make a token 10-10. And then populate, I guess. And make a copy of that. I... Well of Lost Dreams. I really love this. This is another one I've featured before. Um, 
4 for an artifact. Whenever you gain life, you may pay X where X is less or than less than or equal to the amount of life you gained. If you do, draw X cards. Again, just drawing cards. It does cost you one mana per card. That's not bad. One colorless mana or any color of mana. Even if you're talking blue, one blue for one card, not a bad deal. Um, this is like you got to gain life first. You're going to have lots of ways. You're making those tokens with lifelink. You're going to be able to set this off. You don't need to set this off like constantly or have like huge life gain. Even if you do this like once every, you know, or once or twice a turn. If you're drawing like two cards off of this, that's already three cards in a turn, right? That's actually quite good. That's one of the reasons why I like this, where it's one of those kind of really good, but more steady good. I think the steady good ones don't get hit re with removal. If they see like Ristic Study, they t want to take it out because it's one of those like huge benefit cards. And this is like, also you have to pay mana. So it's like, eh, do I waste a removal spell on this? Probably not. Um, yeah, it's a uh, more reliable, I think. Voice of many, two green green for a 3-3. Three, three? Eh. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each opponent who controls fewer creatures than you. Not crazy about this one because it's, I guess, you know, you are getting a 3-3 three, three out of it, but it's like, even in a commander game, that's maximum three cards. And that's if you've got more creatures, maybe they also have a token deck. Um, it kind of like, it can go wrong in a lot of ways if there's a board wipe and then they play some stuff, well, then you're probably behind even. Like, that condition may sound really good with a token deck, but I think there's going to be a lot of times when that doesn't pan out. Like, this deck versus a Chatterfang. I played the Chatterfang yesterday, and this would not keep up with the Chatterfang at all. So that would be automatically one where you're not drawing a card right there. Fog effects. Okay, fog. The original, I think. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn. This is really, really good. Even just to frustrate your opponents. Like meta game, I think it's better than the in-game mechanic. Obscuring Haze. Pretty much the same thing. It costs two and a green, but if your commander's out, it's free. Really good. Riot Control. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to you this turn, so you can just not block and like, instead of uh, losing life, you gain one life for each creature your opponents control. So you're going to play this, you're going to gain a whole bunch of life, and you can just like not block and allow them to attack you, and you're like, yeah, I don't care. Even things like double strike or like, this isn't one creature, right? This is all damage dealt to you is just zero. You're just gaining a life. You're going to be like, nope, not today. Dredju's Resolve. Okay, this is kind of a fog effect. Um, mm, for one white, untap target creature. Prevent all damage that we dealt to this, uh, dealt to it this turn. And also has cycling, which is kind of nice. But um, Dredju's Resolve. Yeah, it just because it's only one creature. It doesn't protect you. It doesn't really cancel combat damage. I think this is worse than a standard fog effect. Um, this is definitely one that I would place pretty early. Dauntless Escort. Okay, this is not really a fog effect, but this is amazing. One green white or for a three 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 C three CMC for a three three. Eh, not bad. Sacrifice it. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Just all your creatures are indestructible. This is a great thing to have on the battlefield, even just for like, to discourage board wipes. If someone has this out, I'm like, oh, there's no point in me using the board wipe because they're just gonna sack it and make everything, all their stuff indestructible. And now I'm gonna blow up my own board and then they come in and like sweep me. Um, not a good idea. Anyway, all right. Just a great card, not a fog effect, I admit, but this is like great, it cancels damage, it cancels like any kind of destroy effect. Again, it cancels board wipes. Makes combat a lot easier when you can just like not worry about damage. So that's why it's almost like a fog effect, but it's like an improved fog effect. The plan. So how does this deck play? First of all, more ramp. Celestia loves ramp. 
Tokens, win cons. I like decks where you can break it down this easily, or this clearly, I should say. Step one, step two, step three. Even a lot of my bu budget decks, I end up making like four steps. I feel like that's overcomplicating it. Just like ramp, tokens, win. Done. It's uh, very clean. More ramp. Okay, Far Haven Elf. For uh, two and a green, a one one, go get a land to uh, into the battlefield tapped. Okay, unbridled growth in aura, enchant a land and add one man of any color to your mana pool, and you can sack it later to draw a card. Getting one green for card draw is actually a really good deal, um, and in the meantime, it's going to make a whole bunch of extra mana. Very nice little card, dryad green seeker. For one and a green, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. It is nice. I think I would want to combine this with something that let me look at the top card of my library at any time. This is an ideal card for that because then you're basically turning it into extra card draw and you, you're taking the guesswork out of it. So yeah. Or even like a scry effect. If you can scry and know what's on top, if it's a land, you're just tapping it and being like, yep, it's that land I already know is there. Now it goes to hand. And the next card is going to be like a second card draw. Okay, deconstruct. Oh boy. So this is a removal that ramps you. Uh, not really ramp, but yeah, you get your removal effect. And so destroy target artifact, then add three green to your mana pool. So it costs two and a green. It costs you three but you get three green out of it. So you can like tap your soul ring, tap a forest and get three color mana out of it. So yeah, you're getting your removal and you're going to uh, make mana on top of removal. Um, Cause it's three to three, I guess it's technically not ramp, but it still is, you're getting the effect and mana. I'd say it's leaning into ramp. Lana War Elves. You're probably very standard mana dork. One green for a 1-1 one, one that taps for one green. Yeah. Always good to have. Tokens. Okay, Hornet Nest. Uh, two and a green for a 0-2 with Defender. Whenever it is dealt damage, that uh, create put that many 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch into the battlefield. This is like a great card, but you need to give it like indestructible or flying or, well, indestructible and flying, I think would be ideal. And then you just, you basically made it so no one wants to attack you, right? Uh, I have one of these. I don't have it in a deck at the moment, but yeah, you're making these one, one flying green insect creature tokens with death touch. Um, Flying tokens with death touch are like the best blockers in the game because like you need, I guess, flying first strike to be able to like not worry about them. So yeah, um, just really discourages attacks hard. Hornet queen, speaking of more hornets, four green, green, green. There's the downside right there. The casting cost of seven. This is another card I have and I actually put it in my chapter fang and there's like, no, too pricey. A 2-2 two, two for 7. Even though flying death touch, a 2-2. Two, two. But when it enters the battlefield, create 4 one, one green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch. So this is only a 2-2, two, two, but it makes 4 one, ones that are also flying with death touch. Um, that's actually quite good. Like, you get a total of 6 flying death touch power onto the battlefield for 7. That's not bad. If you can flicker this, it's crazy good, right? If you can just keep pu putting it, picking up, putting it down, then you're going to just keep making those tokens over and over and over, and it gets way out of hand. March of the Multitudes. Okay, uh, this is an X spell, X green, white, white. Convoke. Having Convoke with tokens is just crazy good. Create X white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. With lifelink. Uh, the Convoke just does so much work as well. Remember, Convoke can pay for colored mana cost as well as long as the color is the same as the creature's color identity. So, like, 
you can tap a white for a white and a green creature for a green. So if you have even two white tokens and a green token, you can pay the green white white and then everything else is the X cost after that. White Sun Zenith. All right, another X spell with X white white white. Create X two two white cat cat uh, cat creature tokens. Shuffle it back into your owner's library. All right, this is a very good card, but you definitely want some kind of like cat synergy there. The fact that it doesn't go to the graveyard, just go straight back to the library so you can do it again is crazy good. I do wish it the it had something like Convoke or something. Um, March of the Multitudes is definitely better in this deck than uh, White Sun Zenith. Hour of Reckoning. So this is not a, a token generator. This is kind of the opposite. This destroys everything except for tokens. Also, once again, it has Convoke. So yeah, you can, can, you can tap your tokens to cast this. It is seven casting costs. That is high even for a board wipe. Um, but it's destroying everything except for tokens. So unless they're also playing again, another token deck against you, you've basically just done a one-sided board way. Um, really kind of mean, but fun. Win con number one. Champion of Lambholtz for uh, one green green, a one one. Sounds bad. It's great. Creatures with power less than Champion of Lambholtz can't block creatures you control. Just turns off blocking. Immediately turns off blocking. They can't declare blocks. That's important. It It's not about when she doesn't need to attack to activate this effect. So that's also an important thing to remember. And it, it this takes effect. It checks when they block. Okay, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Champion of Lamholt. Another creature, not another non-token creature. Any creature. So you're making those tokens with Champion of Lampholt, you're going to just be unblockable very, very quickly. Epic Struggle. Okay, win con number two for two green green enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control 20 or more creatures, you win the game. Just you win. Um, once again, got to get this in my Cheddar Fang. Um, just a really great win con card. It's... Very simple, it's very doable with this deck as well. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so we are to the suggestions. Unfortunately, my son is back out. Um, he was playing Final Fantasy III on his tablet, but I think he got tired of that. So I'm hoping he doesn't make a whole bunch of noise. He's cutting paper. So if you hear a bunch of paper cutting noises, that's what it is. Hopefully he doesn't attack me with uh, any uh, pink Nintendo characters. Anyway, all right. So. Again, suggestions. Here I suggest a few budget changes for a deck. I went way overboard and just redid large chunks of the deck, which I is what I already talked about here. Uh, it was not really needed. I just had too much free time. Yeah. Anyway. So again, these... Ch yes, it is a monster. Thank you. I divided these upgrades in, or sorry, these suggestions into three groups that I called upgrade, similar, and function. So yeah, the upgrade, and I also have win con and vehicle. Vehicle is kind of like under function, I'd say, and then yeah, the win con I would put under upgrade. Like win con is definitely something where you should probably get those in. But anyway, replaceable cards number one. Okay, Fiend Horn Elves. You're a pretty standard mana dork. Always good to have. One green for a 1-1 one, one and taps for one green. Hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? City wide bus. Okay, this is one white white. Destroy all creatures with toughness four or greater. Really, I'm taking this one out because a lot of my suggestions are that to something things that will get plus one plus one counters on. And yeah, hopefully make a lot of those creatures much bigger. So yeah. You might end up nuking your own creatures if you do this. Recollect. For two and a green, is return target card from your graveyard to your hand. 
a really good card to have. We're going to have a lot more recursion effects and uh, cheaper ones. My major compl complaint about this is that it's two in a green. Three? You can find two or a one. Even two, you can get that card to hand and get all kinds of other effects as well. IV Elemental, X to the green. Uh, it answers the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters. So that's nice, but we, I think we could find something better. We're going to add some Convoke to that. And White Sun Zenith, I already talked about. It's a good card. Okay. My son is very loudly cutting paper, which is not what he usually does. Anyway, the upgrade cards. Trail Tracker Scout, if you have green, put this in your deck. Any deck that you can put it in, put it in. Alright, for when the green is a 1-3, mana dwarfs with higher than one toughness. First of all, good. Tap to add one mana of any color. Great start. Whenever you expend 8, return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Again, expend 8 just use, means use 8 mana to cast spells. Is not activated abilities, that's what I thought before. Um, even from the text on the card, that's what it sounds like. It's not. It's only casting spells. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does say to cast spells. Oh, that's my bad. Okay, I just read it wrong. Uh, yeah, what I would, again, Expel the Interlopers, I think is a much better card. So, then, Citywide Bus, choose a number between 0 and 10. Destroy all creatures with power greater than or equal to the chosen number. So instead of it being 4, it's whatever you want, right? If a whole bunch of your creatures are power 5, say 6, right? Um, you can just, like, basically destroy everything with power greater than whatever you want. Um, just a great card. Unnatural Restoration. I, once again, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is limited to permanents, so there is a downside there. But it's only two mana instead of three, and you proliferate. So if you got those plus one, plus one counters, you're just stacking them all up even more. Oh, uh, wow. World Soul Colossus. Okay, here's our X boy. Again, X green white, and rather than just green with the IV elemental, so a little more expensive, but has Convoke. Convoke is so big with tokens. So it answers with X plus one plus one counters on it. You're gonna be able to make this so big, even just like even if you just have tokens, you're gonna end up like with this massive monster of a creature. Uh just really, really good. Rabble Rousing. Four and a white. It has hideaway five. That means you look at the top five cards. Actually, let me make sure. Yeah, look at the top five cards of your library, and we have a frog. Or gummy frog. Okay. Yeah, look at the top five cards of your library, exile one face down, and then you can cast that for free if you have ten or more creatures. Uh, yeah, when you attack, if you control 10 or more creatures, not 10 creatures have to attack, 10 or more creatures, you cast it for free, so you can potentially make this into a rebate. If you exile something with 5 or higher CMC, you're getting value out of that, and you're creating however many you attack with, you just like double the amount of, yeah, you make 1-1 one, one, uh, citizen tokens for each attacker. So you get to that 10 very quickly, attack with 5 anything, as long as they don't get taken out, you got 10 right there, and you're casting that for free. Um, so easy to do with a token deck. Okay, so again, suggestions. This is kind of my second part here, where we're getting to ones that are more incidental, right? Kind of changing how the deck works, um, retooling the themes there. Anyway, rep replaceable cards number two, Fog. Angelic Renewal. Okay, this is a good card. For one, a white, whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may sacrifice Angelic Removal if you do return the card to the battlefield. Not to your hand, straight back to the battlefield. Um, this is great to use in your commander to make sure you don't have to like pay more commander tax or whatever it is. Um, or just any other card you want to keep on the battlefield. Board wipes? Kind of like great. Um, I'm just going to keep this. Anyway, you know, it is a very good card, but we're going to try and find something else. 
Hornet nest we already talked about. Um, it needs indestructible or flying. It needs something extra to make it really good. Is the problem? Narham renegade. Narnam. Narnam renegade. One green for a one two, and with death touch, which is nice. And it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on. If a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn. Pretty easy to get a 2-2 with Death Touch, so it is it is good. But we're going to try to find something better. And Far Haven Elf we talked about already. Getting the land to the battlefield is always nice. For 3 mana, maybe we could find something better. It's okay. Similar cards. Okay, Unbreakable Formation. Making everything indestructible. Obvious, like, counter to any board wipe. and Or not to any board wipe. If they're exiling, it doesn't work, but to any kind of like destruction or board wipe. Um, and addendum, if you cast a spell during your main phase with a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, we're, we've got ways to proliferate, so getting that first counter down is gonna let you make everything huge. Rip Spawn Hunter. Oh boy, okay. So it has uh, two green white Selesnia for a 4 4 at the beginning of your second main phase. If he is tapped, reveal the top X cards of your library where X is his power. Um, reveal any number of creature and or vehicle cards with different powers from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your library in random order. So this, the, this is to replace Angelic Renewal, which is getting something back to the battlefield that died. This is about loading up your hand with more cards. Um, they're similar in that you're going to end up with the more creatures on the battlefield. Don't really do the same thing, that's why I say similar. Rip is just so good if you're going to be tapping him anyway. Savior of the small. Okay, for three and a white. Once again has survival, which is a great keyword in this deck. Survival, whenever it has survival, if, it, if it's tapped after your combat phase, you're gonna get some kind of special effect. So there's lots of survival here. At the beginning of your second main phase, if it is tapped, return target creature card with banner value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. So you're just gonna keep pulling things out of your graveyard. So maybe this is a better replacement for angelic removal or renewal. Angelic removal, I keep saying that. Um, angelic renewal, but yeah, this is gonna to go to your hand, not to the battlefield. So it's not quite as good, but it's repeatable. It's not one time. Bounding Faladar. Okay, this is the first of our saddle ones. Five and a white. So six CMC is high for a four seven. And whenever it attacks while saddled, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control, gain one life for each of those creatures. So you're putting a whole pile of plus one plus one counters on your creatures, not attacking creatures, just all of your creatures, and you're getting one life for all of them. He has saddle too. With saddle, first of all, summoning sickness doesn't matter. But, medicine. Yep, medicine, yeah. You've got medicine, Mason. Actually gotta give you your medicine soon. Please just wait though, bud. Saddle, you can actually tap more. Saddle two means you have to tap like at least two, but you could tap more. You could tap a whole bunch and if you wanted to. Um I again if you want to get the tap effect, it's a great option. You don't really need to. Hopefully you've got more than one thing. You got like vehicles and other saddle effects, but yeah. This will let you tap those creatures that you want to tap as the uh, point. Verdant Confluence, four green green. Six CMC is high, but it does three things. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Recursion, three, you can do three recursion or six plus one plus one counters. And finally, search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Ramp three basic lands. So this costs six, which people often complain about, but it's basically three cards on one card. Like it does have the casting cost of three, but each effect is worth two easily, I think. So yeah, just a monster of a card, uh, at least I think. Replaceable cards number three. Okay. I assume this is in there because there's he probably plays against uh, another player that has a goblin deck. So against a goblin deck, this is amazing. I'm taking this out because I'm building it for any deck, I guess. But 
I just want to acknowledge that it's probably there for a reason. You know, one one, uh, one white white destroy. All goblins are destroyed. Sorry, b -b -b I can't read now. Camaraderie. I talked about this already. Uh, card draws great. Life gains great. CMC is the problem. Uh, periphery nodes for one white. At the beginning of your upkeep, destroy the creature with the least power. It can't be regenerated. If two or more creatures are tied for the least power, choose one of them. If there are no creatures on the battlefield, sacrifice it. Just because you can't really control what this is hitting, it might end up hitting your own things a lot, and if there's a board wipe or something and everything's gone, then it's just gone too. So, ah, it's not really that bad. It is repeatable removal, but I'd like it. If you had like a higher attack power deck, it would be really great, but yeah. Um, you might have the lowest is what I'm concerned about. Lay of the land. Again, it's nice having that getting card to land, but or land to hand, I should say. But anyway, cultivate. Again, two basic land cards, one to hand, one to the battlefield. Great effect, but I think we can chomp that. Function cards. Again, looking at how to improve the function. Other tap creatures you control have death touch. Other untap you have have hex or you control have hex proof. Your whole board, if it's untapped, hexproof, all of your creatures, and then whenever you attack and tap them, boom, death touch. So if they block, they're going to be uh, basically, t you know, just just removing their own creatures, um, and then pay one to untap another target creature or land you control. Oh, this is one of those cards that I actually didn't have on my uh, green upgrade list. It was on like. My, it got cut from my green upgrade list very narrowly. It's a crazy good card, especially in a token deck. Analyze the Pollen. This is my go-to green tutor. Again, it gets one land to hand, just like a Lay of the Land, but you can also uh, exile things to your graveyard with total uh, mana CMC 8, converted mana cost 8, and then it's a tutor for anything. So this is really an upgrade to lay of the land I guess you'd look at it as evolution sage if we're doing plus one plus one counters this is like a must-have card this is one of the most expensive ones in the deck as well evolution sage went over two dollars you used to be one of my go-to's ah my favorite budget cards keep going over my budget limit it's really frustrating and we landfall whenever land enters the battlefield under your control proliferate we're doing lots of landfall, right? We're, or not landfall, we're doing lots of lands. We're going to be playing extra lands, getting lands in, and then you can proliferate. So like Verdant Confluence, if this is on the battlefield and you got plus one, plus ones out, get three lands and just give everything plus three, plus three permanently. Um, and have extra mana. Oy. Wily Duke, Aten Hero. One uh, green white for a four two with Vigilance. Not bad. And when it, uh, whenever she becomes tapped, you gain one life and draw a card. So life gain, card draw. Can't complain about that combo, just for tapping. Again, just tap. Um, once again, anything with saddle, you can tap everything you want and just to saddle the one thing. Two is like the minimum. If it's a saddle two, it needs at least two power. It can be like infinite power settling it really uh Silvala, eagle tr e eager the eagle ah oh, i can't talk trailblazer two green white this is actually the number one on my list of elf uh mana dorks. a four or five with vigilance not bad for four a mana dork with vigilance is so good because like you can still attack and tap for mana and whenever you cast a, a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one mercenary creature token. Cast a creature spell, not make it a creature token, unfortunately. But this makes tokens that you can tap and target creature you control gets plus 1 until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. With the thickest in the thicket. That's an enchantment, you play it, and then whatever your attack power is on your creature, you get that many plus 1, plus 1 counters on it. So just to your commander, Boost up your commander's attack, hopefully already getting some plus one plus one. Get her up to like seven attack power. 
thickest in the thicket. Or, and yeah, it's going to be 14 attack power. Really, with very little effort. Uh, you can probably get this up to like, even to commander damage one shot range. Not that, that hard. Um, and then yeah, she can also tap, choose a color, add one mana of, uh, of a color that for each different power among creatures you control. Can't read, but anyway. For each different power, we're putting plus one, plus one counters on a bunch of creatures and generating tokens. We're going to have a whole bunch of different powers. One mana for each of those of any color that you choose. Um, whoa. Okay. Uh, the main mechanic is focusing on upgrade. This is getting uh, bonuses out of tapping creatures. We've already seen a lot of those. So that's where you have things like survive and yeah, tap and gain a life draw card. Things like saddle, but vehicle is the next thing that's really good for that. Because vehicle, again, you tap the creature and you don't have to like send it into combat or risk it. And you can get actually get more value out of that attack wise with uh, vehicles. So we're going to look at those. Recon craft theta. So when it enters the battlefield, create a 0-0 blue alien creature token and put a plus one plus one counter on it. Great start. And every time it attacks, it's going to proliferate. Again, if you've got Banding Felidar or anything else that's putting plus one plus one counters on all your creatures, Recon craft theta is just going to like put another one, another one, another one. Every turn it's just throwing another plus one plus one counter or any other kind of counter on anything you want. Even if someone else is playing Infect, you can uh, proliferate those Infect counters on other players. You don't have to, they don't have to be counters you put on them, right? So you can really abuse this easily. Anyway, it's crew too. Remember, you can go over. Crew is like the minimum. So yeah. But it allows you to tap and have a 4-4 four, four for only 2. And that's also going to proliferate. Asika's Chariot. I feel like I'm not... Asika's? I don't know. 3 and a green for a 4-4. Four, four. So when it enters, create two, uh, 2 2 green cat creature tokens. Good start. And whenever it attacks, uh, create a token of target token. Uh, that's a copy of target token you control. Especially if you've got, like, you know, the Idol of Oblivion. If you made that 10 10 Eldrazi, you can use this attack, make a second 10 10 Eldrazi. And then you're just, like, basically populating these moths, huge monster Eldrazi things. Which you can also give plus one, plus one counters. Okay, unlicensed Hurst. Hurst, buh, buh Hurst. Um, yeah, it is only two mana. And you can, uh, it starts out as a zero, zero. But you tap it, exile two target cards from a single graveyard. Graveyard hate, always a good thing to have. Unless his hearse power is equal, uh, power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards exiled with it. So you're going to tap this, exile cards, untap it, tap it, exile more cards. So this is going to start as a, pretty much right away, you want to exile cards, make it a 2-2, two, two, then 4-4, four, four, and you can just keep going, right? The downside is that if you're tapping to exile the cards, you can't then use it to attack with, but... The graveyard hate, and if you don't want to remove things from graveyard, you just got like probably a decent sized creature to attack with. Um, oy. Parhelion. So high casting cost, six white, white, so eight CMC, but it's a five, five flying first strike vigilance. And whenever it attacks, create two, four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are attacking. It has Vigilance, it's going to make 4-4 four, four tokens that are also flying with Vigilance. So every time you attack, it is going to be 13 flying Vigilance power on the battlefield. Um, that casting cost of 8 is not that high if, you, if you're like, oh, every time I attack, it's 13 flying Vigilance. <sighs> Crazy. Oh, sorry, Crew 4. I should be saying the Crew cost. That's kind of the point. Mobile Homestead for two. Uh, it has haste as long as you control a mount. We got lots of mounts in here, so that's good. And whenever it attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it is a land card, you may put it into the battlefield tapped. 
kind of just ramping as well, right? So this is almost a replacement for the Dryad, where it gets the line to hand is going straight to the battlefield. So you're kind of ramping there. And it's only crew two, so that's not bad for a 3-3. That's going to ramp you. Um, really nice little card, I think. More win cons. Okay, Cultivator of Blades. Three green green for a 1-1 one, one. sounds bad. Fabricate two. So when it comes in, you can make two 1-1 one, one servos or put two plus one plus one counters on this. So it comes in as a 3-3. Three, three, and whenever it attacks, you may have other attacking creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is its power. This is insanely good with Champion of Lampolt, especially. You attack with both of them, and then uh, it automatically boosts Champion of Lampholt's power. So as soon as they want to block, they got to check against this new power, its boosted power. Probably just can't block anymore, is what happens, right? So that's a kind of synergistic win con there. Toby Beastie Befriender. I'm actually, I just got one of these and for my token deck, for my uh, Convoke token deck, I should say. Uh, two and a white for a 1-1. One, one. When he enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 four, four white beast creature token with his creature can't attack or block alone. Um, a 4-4 four, four is not bad. Also, you can, you know, populate or make to uh, copies of this. And then, yeah, you're going to have your two that you need to attack or block and their 4-4s, four, which is not bad. As long as you control four more creature tokens, creature tokens you control have flying. You're making so many creature tokens. They're going to be flying. So that's basically your wink on right there is that you're granting all of your tokens evasion. It's kind of the same idea as uh, um, Champion of Lanholt in a way, but yeah. Thickest in the thicket. I mentioned this already. This is great if you can like boost your uh, commander's power. You only need to get it to 11, which may sound like a lot, but it's not really. When you start throwing these plus one, plus one counters and tapping mercenaries, to boost the power, you're going to get to 11 very quickly. And if you get to 11, thickest in the thicket, and then all the way up to 22. And that's 21 is commander damage, just one shot win, right? And also, if you have the highest power, you get to draw two cards. I played against this yesterday, and this is brutal. This is brutal. Um, yeah, I haven't put this in a deck yet. I will be. Oh my gosh. This was just such a mean card. Uh, lost to this yesterday, not to this, to the, the deck that had this, not this specifically, I guess. Final thought. So this is a fast and fun, fun commander deck that will get work done. Again, that low CMC commander, you're gonna get that out soon, and you're gonna just like be off and running faster than most other decks are still getting set up. You're gonna be like ramping, and you're gonna just be like going right away it is a very fast deck especially like for Selesnia that's nice commanders like this have many different ways they can be built and show how each player puts together will vary a lot so yeah how each player builds this is gonna really kind of vary a lot and I think that's the way that it was originally built and what I did with it are very different I wouldn't say one's right or one's wrong it's kind of just like how you want to do it uh, using her as more of a primary Selesnya commander works and going off her tap ability works too. So again, I was focused very much on the tap, uh, getting extra value out of tapping creatures and tapping different things, and the way it's originally built is as a Selesnya commander. Both very good options, I think, okay? And so I just want to keep stressing, I feel like I've said this a lot, I am not hating on the original deck, I'm not. I, th I think it's a solid deck. That's one of the things that were made it kind of difficult to change up because I need to make, take it into a very different direction, I think, to have like a lot to do with it. Anyway, take it easy.